In this tutorial, we'll take a quick look at this scene that was done with uh, Cycles Render. And you can see from here in the Render tab that I have the Render Mode set to 120 and the Preview at 10. So here's what I'm seeing in the Preview like this. And it's pretty nice, but there's a few points I wanted to make about the rendering, maybe like you, if you've seen the previous tutorial I did on Cycles Rendering. So let's go take a look at the fully rendered image here. All right, so you, you see it comes out to be a much nicer image. But what's important about this image is, and this is for those of you who aren't artists, because I wasn't an artist when I started into computer graphics. I got into it because I loved to be a programmer, and I liked art at the same time. But I really wasn't an artist, you know, by any means. I wasn't trained, didn't know anything about colors and things of that nature. I do now. But so if you notice in here, the way I have this set up, is that it's the colors is what really helps bring this scene to life because if I had just had this color and this color in here by themselves they don't really offset each other very well versus if you just look at this purple and the green they help to complement each other's colors and the, the reason you do it is because now you notice the purple here you'll see there's purple reflected in the green here and yellows and blues are complementary colors to each other and there, so there's some yellow reflected in the blue here, and that helps bring this blue to life. And I should see, I was hoping to see a little, maybe there's a little bit of yellow right on the edge of this as well. And that helps bring the purple to life, and vice versa. So, and reds are complementary to blues, and greens are like this. So just the balance of the colors in the scene can really help your uh, scene tremendously. And so I'll give you an idea, and this again, if you're not an artist, Let's just see, let's go into the Material tab and take a look at the color. And one of the easiest ways to start doing it is just take a look at the color wheel. And when you build objects, build them so you're they're opposite of the color wheel. So here's blue, and there's the yellow, and that's why the blue and yellow are there. And then there's blue, and there's purple. It's not quite on the opposite side, but they're still fairly complement, complementary colors, like it's the opposite opposite of each other like this and notice the green and the purple they're next to each other but now you see this red and this purple like this well they're kind of adjacent to each other so if those were the only two in the scene like that they really want you notice they don't really have that same kind of contrast uh, to each other so just by doing these kind of effects with your colors can help really uh, bring your scene out and it's the same way with lights and shadows. I remember when I used to paint with acrylics, I'd make sure that I painted with certain colors for shadows. I wouldn't always use like black. In fact, you would rarely use black, but you would use certain colors to for your shadows. And a lot of times it was based on the type of material. Like in this case, well, we have green, and then you can see there's actually green light reflected off the surface like that. So you'd have to take that into consideration. And you might put a little green paint down there. And if I was to do this same scene, inside the typical blender render module what I would do is to try and really bring it to life and some of you still might want to do that because this was about a five minute render and maybe you want you know maybe you can't afford that much time to render you know 30 minutes of animation but so in that case you might use the blender render and then for this where this green is down here you can simulate that by putting in really low intensity lights of the same color as the bottle right in there and really low intensity blues along this edge and see you can look closely you'll see yellows there and things like that and then you can try and simulate it. and I actually like blender render still because it's fun and like I said I don't really want to spend five minutes to wait per frame to make a really cool image even though I really like really cool images they really are cool but the value of this is that when you render like this then you can take these and use them as texture maps within other programs and that's what I exactly intend to do with this image as well so alright well that's it I just wanted to point out that point and I'll see you in the next video